section 9.5. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk about a, a, a different coordinate system, a different coordinate system than x, x and y's um, that have to do with radius, radii, a radius and an angle. Um, we call the x and y coordinate system. Uh, we call the rectangular coordinate system. And what we want to talk about today is polar coordinates. So let's, uh, we're going to draw a picture for our polar coordinate system. So polar coordinate system, the, our picture is going to look um, somewhat familiar. Our origin we call the pole. And the po origin is the point zero zero. And rather than an x-axis, we have what we call the polar axis. And the polar axis corresponds to theta <laughs> equals zero. And then our point in polar coordinates is going to be at the end on the terminal side of an angle. So just like we talked about when we, when we did the unit circle. Theta, we're rotating theta. The distance from the origin, from the pole, is r and we label the coordinates of that point R theta. So instead of X and Y, we call it R theta. We're pi over 6 radians and 7 units out. And that gives us the coordinates of a point. Uh, we measure theta just like when we did, just like when we worked with the unit circle, is counterclockwise from the polar axis. And R is the distance from the pole to the point. Um, polar coordinates are extremely useful in lots in a lot of different situations. When we have things that are moving in circles rather than things that are moving in um, in other kinds of shapes. So if we have something something that has something to do with circles, uh, polar coordinates is going to be very, very nice. Uh, we also have, just so we're, we're prepared for it in the future, the axis here rather than the y-axis, we call that the pi over 2 axis. So this is the polar axis, this is the pi over 2 axis. And it just, just gives us another reference point. But our point has to do with how far it is away from the pole and what angle we need. So if we're going to plot points in polar coordinates, that's what our nice graph paper is for there. So let me grab a picture of one of those. What the graph paper represents is the circles represent a constant radius. So just like with rectangular graph paper, the lines represented a constant x or a constant y. The circles represent a constant radius, so this would be radius 1, radius 2, radius 3. And then we have our unit circle angles here. 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, etc. So if we wanted to plot the point um, 2, pi over 4, this tells us to go out on the, if we're 
labeling our radii, radii by two, or by one, one, two, three. Go on the radius two circle and put a point at theta equals pi over four. There would be the point two pi over four. Sure. Yeah. So that would be our point two pi over four. And if we wanted to plot another point, grab another another picture here. So if we wanted the point um, three negative pi over six, well negative pi over six tells us instead of going counterclockwise, we're going to go clockwise pi over 6. So here I am on the radius 3 circle and there's the point 3 negative pi over 6. And we can see from this, this point, this is the same as the point 3 11 pi over 6. Those are co-terminal angles. We'll talk a little bit more about that next. So questions on plotting points in polar coordinates. All right, so we have a coterminal angle here. Negative pi over 6 is coterminal with 11 pi over 6. Polar coordinates, that kind of hints, hints to us, polar coordinates are not unique. So there's more than one way of writing polar coordinates. So in rectangular coordinates, there's, there's only one point that's at 3, 4. But we can write more than one point that represents, for example, this one down here, 3, negative pi over 6. We could write it different ways. And the first way that we can do that is with coterminal angles. So we say that r theta is the same point as the point r theta plus 2n pi. So that's a coterminal, those are coterminal angles. We're just going around the circle an extra time. And this, just so we remember, is an even multiple of pi. But just like when we talk about x's and y's, we can do negative x and negative y. We can talk about a negative, negative radius. And in, when we're talking about coordinates, negative just tells us which direction to go. So r theta is the same as negative r, just tells us to go the opposite direction, and our angle is an odd multiple of pi. We'll look at an example of, of how this how this works. And we'll plot plot these points. So we want uh, three other coordinates. For the point uh, two pi over three. And then we'll we'll plot this point. Well, the easiest one to do is just a coterminal angle with theta. So we could say 2 pi over 3 equals 2 pi over 3. What's the easiest even multiple of pi to add? Plus, what's our easiest multiple of pi, even multiple of pi? Even easier. 
2. That's the first one, right? 2 pi. And that's 2 comma pi over 3 plus 2 pi. How many, how many pi thirds is, how many thirds is 2? 6 thirds. So this is going to be 2 comma 7 pi over 3. So those two points would be the same point. They wouldn't be two points, they'd be one point. We can also add an odd multiple of pi. And our radius turns to a negative radius. Yes? Uh, can we do one more time without the Here? Uh, yeah, from there. Yeah. 2 pi is 6 pi over 3. 6 pi over 3 plus pi over 3 is 7 pi over 3. So I just found a common denominator. I can say negative 2, negative radius. Or let me, let me write it out this way. 2 pi over 3 equals negative 2 pi over 3. What's the easiest odd multiple of pi to add to pi over 3? 1 pi. So that's going to be the point negative 2 pi is 3 pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3. There's two ways. These are the same point. We'll plot them here in just a second. So which which what, which one do we want to do next? Even multiple or an odd multiple of pi? Even. Even. So our radius is going to be positive. And what even multiple of pi do we want to add? Six pi? since we talked about that one already. Pi over 3 plus 6 pi. How many pi thirds is 6 pi? Eighteen pi over 3. So this is going to be 20 pi over 3. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, thank you. 19 pi over 3. And if we wanted to plot this point, let me grab a graph here. So here's our point. It's not cooperating. I'm just going to put it here. <coughs> All right. So our point, our point, uh, two pi over three. Here's the two radius, and here's the pi over three. So there's my point. And for the negative radius, what I think of is. Uh, we had the one that was at negative 2, 4 pi over 3. Well, here's my angle 4 pi over 3. But instead of going a positive distance this way, I'm going to go a negative distance. So I'm going to think of going the opposite direction from the angle to the point. So negative 2, 4 pi over 3 is the same point. So here's 4 pi over 3, and I go the opposite direction to here. That's how I think of that negative radius thing. And then 7 pi over 3, I'm up the radius, or 19 pi over 3. That just means I've gone around an extra 3 times. 1, 2, 3, and back to the same point.
and there are those other two. All right, questions there? Okay. Coordinate conversions. Part of what we're going to do with polar coordinates is we want to convert back and forth from rectangular to, to polar. And our conversions should be familiar at this point because we did the same thing in um, we did the same things in trigonometry. Let me write those up there. And this comes from our little triangle that we drew a lot of times uh, before. So here's here's our points in polar coordinates, our theta, here's our polar axis, the theta equals zero axis, there's my angle, theta, and I turn this into a little triangle, there's x and there's y and there's r. So our conversions, r squared, equals x squared plus y squared from the Pythagorean theorem. x equals our cosine theta. It's using trigonometry there. y equals our sine theta. And tangent theta equals y over x. Same, same conversions, same formulas, same equations that we used when we when we did uh, right angle trigonometry. So these are the conversions that we're going to use to convert coordinate points and to convert equations back and forth between rectangular and polar coordinates. So let's convert a few coordinates. So we want to convert these to rectangular. So I have the point 4, pi over 6. And this is our theta. Well, using our conversions, x equals our cosine theta. So 4 cosine pi over 6. And then we remember from our unit circle, from when we took our quiz and everybody got 100%. We remember the cosine of pi over 6 is what? Uh, it's, its, it's its partner, square root of 3 over 2. It's the long side of the triangle. So this is 2 square root 3. And then y equals 4 sine pi over 6 which is 4 times 1 half, which is 2. So this would be the point 2 square root 3, 2, for x and y. So the point 4 pi over 6 is the same as the point 2 square root 3, comma, 2. All right, questions there? Let's look at another one. Um, we're going to, to rectangular, negative 2, 5 pi over 4. This is our theta. So we say x equals negative 2, cosine 5 pi over 4, which is negative 2 times cosine of 5 pi over 4 is... Cosine of 5 pi over 4. Here we are down here at 5 pi over 4. Negative square root of 2 over 2. So this is the point square root of 2. And y equals negative 2 sine 5 pi over 4, which is negative 2 times the sine of negative square root of 2 over 2.
square root of 2. So this point is square root 2, square root 2. And if we're thinking about this, plotting this point, there's my angle pi pi over 4, and I go in the opposite direction, and that puts me up there at square root 2, square root 2. <coughs> so we're just using x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta for those conversions. All right, the next two are going to convert to polar. <coughs> All right, so this is negative 1, negative 1. And that's x and y. And we want to go to <coughs> r and theta. Well, let's, let's try to do it. We can do it both ways. We can do this without doing very much work. If I'm at the point negative 1, negative 1, here's negative 1, negative 1. What angle is that? And from the positive, from the polar axis, this is 5 pi over 4. Theta is 5 pi over 4. And how far away from the origin am I at the point negative 1, negative 1? Square root of 2 units, r equals square root of 2. Because the two sides of my triangle are, are both 1, so the diagonal is square root of 2. So this r theta would be square root of 2 pi pi over 4, and we did that without doing much trigonometry. We could do it the other way. We could say that tangent theta is negative 1 over negative 1. So tangent theta is 1. And we need an angle in the, in the third quadrant whose tangent is 1. We have to remember the unit circle there. And we would say that that tells us that theta is pi pi over 4. And we know that r squared is x squared plus y squared. So r squared is 2. So r is the square root of 2. If we wanted to work it out using our, using our conversion. So negative 1, negative 1 would be the point <coughs> square root of 2, 5 pi over 4. This one should be really easy, hopefully. X, x is 0, y is negative 2. What's our angle here? We're down here. What is that angle? 3 pi over 2. Theta is 3 pi over 2. Because we're on the negative y axis. What is R, how far away are we from the origin? Two units. So this would be the point 2, 3 pi over 2. <coughs> and we could go through using the equations again. This, this way is way easier. Just sort of think about think about what we're talking about here. Yes. So yeah. yeah, the conversions are always going to give you a positive R and a and a and a unit circle line. And then you could change it depending on what what you need to do with it. All right, so another thing that we want to do with polar coordinates, we will have equations in polar coordinates. And that's the, we're going to do a lab on Friday that has all to do with equations of polar coordinates, graphs of polar equations. And we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But we want to know how to convert back and forth so we can visualize. It's easier to visualize, usually for us, what, the graph, what a graph is if we can look at the equation in rectangular coordinates. So we want to do a little practice. converting equations. And converting equations is a little, little tricky. 
All right, so we want to convert to We want to convert two rectangular coordinates. So our first example is in polar coordinates r equals 5. So before we start working, let's think about what this is. What is what kind of shape has a radius of 5? Never changes. Circle, radius 5, right? That's what this is telling us. The radius is 5. Well, the thing that has a radius of 5 is a circle. What's the equation of a circle with radius 5 and the origin is a center? x minus h. h is 0. x squared plus y squared equals 25. r squared. If we didn't see that, if we couldn't pick that out right away, I know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. From this equation, I can square both sides. r squared equals 25. So x squared plus y squared equals 25. Substitute. Another way to come up with the equation of that of that circle. How about theta equals pi over 4? What would that be? Some kind of graph that has a constant angle of pi over 4. But what is what what kind of graph has a constant angle? A line. X equals Y, right? Our, our angle is 45 degrees. This is the line Y equals X. If we didn't see that, we would say, using our conversion, tangent theta is Y over X. So tangent pi over 4 is Y over X. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So y equals x. Multiply both sides by x. So in polar coordinates, the equation of the line y equals x is theta equals pi over 4. A lot of times using the equation in polar coordinates is way easier than using the equation in rectangular coordinates. r equals 5, way easier to use than x squared plus y squared equals 25. This is nice, this gets kind of messy. All right, let's look at another, a little trickier one. R equals 2 cosine theta. So when I look at this one, what I think is, I know that R cosine theta equals x. That's one of my conversions. Well, I see that cosine theta and I want to get an r cosine theta so I have an x. What can I do to this equation to get an r cosine theta there? What's that? I don't just not even not even manipulating the equation. What can I do to this to get an r there? What do I have to do to this to get an r there? Multiply by r. Multiply both sides of my equation by r. I'm allowed to multiply both sides of the equation by anything I want, right? r squared equals 2r cosine theta. So I just multiplied everything by r. Well, this is nice, right? What's r squared? x squared plus y squared equals 2. r cosine theta is x. And then we write this, usually we write this, x squared minus 2x plus y squared equals 0. What's that the equation of? We have an x squared, we have an y squared, we have the same number in front of both of them. 
That's a circle. And if we wanted to see where the center was, we'd complete the square, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'd see this is a circle, uh, radius one, uh, center at one zero. So this is the equation of a circle of radius one with center at one zero. All right, last one. R equals one over one minus cosine theta. This is kind of a preview for what we're going to do at the end of the end of the unit here. All right, so when I see that fraction, what, what's what's the first thing we think of when we when we want to get rid of when we want to get rid of a fraction? Multiply both sides by this thing. So I get r times 1 minus cosine theta equals 1. And now I can distribute this r, r minus r cosine theta equals 1. Well, this looks okay. We can get a rectangular coordinate of this now, rectangular equation. What is r? square root of x squared plus y squared minus r cosine theta is x equals 1. To simplify this, I would write square root of x squared plus y squared equals 1 plus x. Square both sides to get rid of that square root. x squared plus y squared equals x squared plus uh, 2x plus 1. Subtract the x squareds from both sides, and I get y squared equals 2x plus 1. Well, what is that? It's a parabola. So this equation, r equals 1, 1 over 1 minus cosine theta, is a parabola. Is it vertical or horizontal? Since the y is, y is squared, horizontal. So it's got a horizontal major ac horizontal axis. So this is the equation of a horizontal parabola. And we're going to talk about equations that look like this at the end of the chapter. That's kind of where we're going with all this pol polar coordinate stuff. We're going to do our conic sections in polar coordinates. Turns out that any time we have an equation like this, we get some kind of conic section. 1 over 1 minus cosine theta, 1 over 1 minus sine theta. And depending on these numbers, instead of 1s here, we get parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas or circles. <coughs> All right, questions? Okay. Every other odd there. Every other even there. <coughs> <coughs> 